we're going to work on our blending options and the envelope distort tools. I'm going to show you a couple images here to kind of give you an idea of how this can be beneficial. So here's a topographical map, which is a pretty neat thing to see. Um, you've probably seen these kind of uh, stock images before. I got these from Adobe Stock, but it kind of shows you how all these lines are blended. I'm going to show you how we do that. Um, here's another example. Uh, some of us have easily bought these things from websites. Uh, stack sites, but um, I'm going to show you how you can actually make them. So here's one that um, I actually created uh, using the same type of process, so we'll do that together. I'm also going to show you how to use the envelope distort tools. Uh, here are a couple examples of that. And then we'll use more of the blending tools as well. So there's a couple of different ways a person can achieve these effects. So we'll start with this one first, these type of images first. And let me just show you um, if I go to wireframe or preview outline, you can see under view, command E or command Y, command Y for outlines. You'll see the actual lines that I put in here um, and uh, you can see there isn't very many compared to what it actually looks like. So let, let's go through that. So let me make a new page here. So what I want you to do is just take your paintbrush um, or you can use your, your um, uh, pen tool, you can use a pencil. So I'm just going to use the paintbrush. But uh, what we want to do is just create some wavy lines. And we want these lines to kind of crisscross. So we want to make just a bunch of different kinds of lines here. And we want to have a pair. So how many do I have right now? Four. Okay, let me make just a couple more. And then one more will come down this way and cut across this way. Okay, I'm going to make my lines much, much thinner. So let me just make a more hairline. And let's try, this has been an experiment, but let's try these two paths. So what you want to do is you want to take your blending tool, which is over here on your left, I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to say I want specific number of steps. So you can see it says smooth, specific steps, or specific distance. I want, I want uh, specific steps. We want a lot, so let's just say 30. Then I'm going to click from the, the pointer is inside that box. So I'm going to hit that box with the dotted lines below it right on this line and then right on that line and voila. Now I'll take this one and how about this one and I'll say let's increase the amount of lines even and let's just say 40 and I'm going to click from here to here or let's try from here to here. Ooh, that looks cool as well. So you can see that distance worked better than me clicking from here to here. That gets a little screwy, but if I click from here to here, it's nice and clean. And then let's take our last set of lines. Isn't this neat? I'm going to click from here to here. Okay, so, um, oh, in fact, let's make that even more lines. Let's just say, let's add 50 to that one. And I'm going to click from here to here. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to make a gradient. So in your gradient swatches, you always have this from black to white. Let me move this over as well. So we could do that, and I could say go here. Oh, actually, let me do this, and then let me do the gray here. So now we have grays. Um, for this one, I made myself another gradient, but I'll do make a new one with you. Uh, let's grab orange to red, and I'll get rid of this. Oh, I thought I grabbed orange. Oh, I did, but I there you go. So 
from a nice blue. Not hitting it right on the mark, darn it. To a, a nice purple. Okay, so now you can see all these. I can select them all and then I can go to appearance and transparency and multiply. So this is in an essence how these are made. You just got to pick your set of colors you want to work with. I can pick those colors so let's go back and change it to we can leave the grays I guess but let's change it to blues and blues and purples. So we have this one which is fine I guess it's a little deeper. We'll change this one to a light blue and a light purple. I'm going to go in here and we will just change back the opacity to like 50%. I'll change this opacity to like 50%. And then the last one, let's say this color. And how about this color? And we'll change that to 50%. So now you get the idea how to make these. I'm, isn't it cool? At least I thought it was cool. Um, and believe it or not, it does come in handy. So let me just swap these colors around here. There you go. Kind of neat. All right. So let's keep going. All right. So on this one, I want to show you... Uh, well, actually, let's go up here to the blending one. The blending one, let me show you how we do that. So again... I'm going to look at under outlines or command Y. All it is is a circle to a square, four circles, and then some colored lines. So let me show you how easy that is. I'll move these things down. So I'll make another circle and I'll just fill this one full of yellow. And then I'll take my square and I'll fill that one with like a blue. Take these and I can click on here and say let's do 10 steps click from here to here and voila. Pretty neat. Alright and for this one let me show you how we're going to do that. Alright so again let's take our circle or ellipse make one here I'm going to hold down shift option drag it over here select both of those shift option drag it down here I'm going to make this one yellow I'll make this one green I'll leave that blue but I'll make this one a red okay same thing except we're going to take the blending tool this time we're going to say smooth color I'm going to click right in the middle with my square. I'm going to click right in the middle of the circle here, and here, and here, to here, to here. And wop, 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 voila! Isn't that neat? Let me show you how we're going to do this one. And I guess I don't need to put quite so many lines in it this time. Take your line tool, and for this I'm just going to make it black. So I'm going to go vertical. And I'm going to say Command C for copy, Command F for paste in place. And maybe we'll just make two point. Well, let me, we can do it more than that. Let me, um, let's just say here, copy and paste. And I'm going to rotate it here. Okay, so we'll do something like this. Then I'm going to zoom in. And I am going to select one of these. And take my little scissors. Slice it in the center, select that one, um, select this one here, my scissors, slice that in the center, take this here, and slice this in the center. So now these should all be independent, which is important. Okay, let's zoom back out. Okay, so I'll make my top one green, second one yellow. Then orange, we'll just kind of do the rainbow, red, blue, and a purple. Okay, and so what we want to do here is make sure our blending tool is on smooth. 
And I'm going to click from this endpoint to that endpoint to this endpoint. So and so forth. Voila! This is what she looks like. And then I just need to make myself a circle, the elliptical. Put it in the middle. Make it kind of go a little bigger if I want. Select all of these. Command 7 or Object Clipping Mask Make. Learn the keyboard shortcuts. There could be a test coming. And voila. And there we have it. So here are some really cool ways to using that tool. I'll demonstrate for you how to use the warp tool for shapes, patterns, and designs. This I use mostly for text, so we'll start with that. So if you can take this word and type out a word, any word really, and you can assign it any kind of font you want. Let's find something kind of thick. Maybe, you know what? Let's base it off the TV show. Let's go for Rosewood, something that's QRS. Let's do this, okay? Um, you can change the point size here if you'd like. Um, honestly, I like to hold down my ship option and drag it any size I want. So if I click the edge of it and hold down option shift, I can size it any size I want. So I'm just making a couple of extra of these. So again, if I click and hold Option Shift and drag, it duplicates them. Okay. All right, so let's take the first one. I'll move these out of the way. All right, look at this. This is really neat. So Effects, Warp, Arc. Okay, so I'm under Effects, Warp, Arc. Now look what I can do. So hit your preview. If you don't see it, it's because you got to select your preview. You can select how much of this arcs, right? A lot, a little bit. If you want to arc it vertically, right? Horizontally. Isn't that neat? But while you have this open, you also can walk through any number of these. So if you have this as an example, and then you decide you need to fit it in a layout, but it doesn't really work, you can go ahead and squish it, size it, scale it, do whatever you'd like to do with it. So let's do that again. Let's grab another one, Effects, Warp, and we'll do Fish. And you can make it really exaggerated if you'd like, right? You can change how far each one of these goes if you'd like. Say OK. Then I can squish it, make it a little more fishy, and then you could always do something fun with your graphic. Right? Isn't that kind of fun? And let's put a little fin on its back. Make it look more fishy-like. Guess the word trout maybe would have been, or shark would have been more, but a fish shape, you can make it into a fish. There's a lot of options you can do with these, right? So again, have fun, play with these, figure out what you like, what you don't like, right? I want to also show you another way you can do this, effects. If you do distort and transform, free distort. So what that means is you can grab these anchor points and do whatever you want with them. You have to be careful. Sometimes they don't look so great, in my opinion. Let me move this one up here. Let's do a different one. Extort. This was Punker and Bloat. Do Preview. So what it's doing is it's, it's modifying the letter shapes. In fact, that might be funner if we do it. Let's change the font to something more streamlined. Here we go, Arial. And now we can use Punker Preview. Kind of cool, right? So let's um, let's try some shapes with these. So let's take this. I'll move these down. Whoops! Let's grab them all. Move them down. So let's take um, let's take a star. Okay. So as a star goes, you can say roughen, right? And you can say how much you want it to rough rough up. 
right? Isn't that cool? Right, or we can make another star and let's try um, zigzag. Kind of looks like a snowflake, doesn't it? Isn't that cool? Let's make another one. Okay, effects, distort, transform. And let's do, did we do a twist? I don't think we did a twist. Did we do a twist? So I can put in 25. Let's put in 45 degrees. So you kind of get the idea. There's a whole lot of really fun things you can do using the variety of options. We'll get into some of these other ones as well, but this, these were under warp and under distort and transform. So have fun, experiment with them, and upload your final to the Dropbox. Let us go to this one. Okay, so to make these, let me show you. We'll make a new page. And I'm going to make some lines and drag it down. I'm holding down when I do that. I'm dragging down Option Shift and then Command D, Command D. And I'm just going to make a bunch of these. It looks kind of square. I'm going to grab all these, say Group, Copy, Paste in Place, Spin and Rotate. And I'm just going to pull these in so it's the perfect square. Grab this so it's a perfect square, like so, okay? All right, so look how cool this is. So I can grab all this, go to Object, uh, Envelope Distort, and I'm going to say uh, Make with Warp. And I can come in here and modify this into different shapes. We kind of did some of this in the beginning of the semester, but I'm going to show you a little bit more. Kind of a wave, just say, okay, a wave. And I can pull these sliders to kind of distort it more than, than usual, right? Which is cool. And you can do different perspectives on that as well. A lot of capabilities. Say, okay. Here, let's grab this anchor point here, and I can bend it. I can take this anchor point there and bend it. So you can see there's different anchor points that got assigned to it. You can modify these anchor points as well, which is neat. So, so let's take our star tool and let's make some stars. Oops, let me make. Uh, okay. And I don't need this stroke on here. Make it cleaner. Okay. Okay, and then grabbing this, Option Shift, drag it down, Command D. Remember, we do them super fast that way, which is neat to do. All right, so I'm going to do two sets. So I'm copying this, and I'm doing Option Shift to drag in another set over here. Then I'm going to take this set, same thing. I'm going to go to Envelope Distort, and I can make it do fun things. I did the wave. Let's do a fish or something. Which I think is awesome. Okay, and then I can take this one and let me make a ellipse shape. Check it out now. Watch what I do. Doesn't matter what color this is or if it's a color at all. And I'm going to grab all of these. I'm going to object, envelope distort, make with top object, and voila. Isn't that neat? So that's how you can do that, adapt it to a shape. Um, let me just do one more for you. Oh, that's a little bit big. And okay. Object, envelope, distort, make with mesh. Say okay. And what that allows me to do, oops, click on an active anchor point and distort it. Okay, I want to show you one other thing that's pretty neat. Let's just do it with circles. Make them blue. And we'll go like this. 
eyeball it, do it like this, grab all these, go to object, envelope to store, make with mesh, which means I can pick how many, let me hit preview, you can see how many um, columns and rows it makes and how many compartments, four by four, say okay. And then I can actually grab this anchor point and move these around. It makes a really neat, fun pattern. So there you go. That's how this is done. And I hope you have fun. What I